NASA reached to the west for the European-built Columbus Laboratory, and now it turns to the east for a Japanese-made science module named Kibo that means hope. The first Kibo segment, a pressurized logistics module, along with a Canadian robotic system named Dexter, will ride into orbit aboard Space Shuttle Endeavour, bringing new potential for space research. Endeavour and its seven-member crew are ready for an international mission, one that represents the collective space ambition of three nations. The countdown for the launch of Space Shuttle Endeavour is underway. Live from Kennedy Space Center, this is continuing coverage of the countdown to launch of Space Shuttle Endeavour on mission STS-123. From Launch Complex 39 at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, this is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus three hours in holding, with our one hour, one minute, 48 seconds remaining in this two and one half hour built-in hold. We're in the final five hours of the countdown for the launch of Endeavour on mission STS-123. The countdown is being controlled from firing room four at the Launch Control Center, and we are on schedule for liftoff at 2.28 a.m. Eastern Time, making this the 30th night launch of the shuttle program. This is also the 122nd launch of the Space Shuttle, the 21st for Space Shuttle Endeavour, and the 25th for construction of the International Space Station. The primary objective of the mission is to deliver the Japanese pressurized logistics module to the International Space Station, which will later be attached to the Kibo Laboratory to be launched aboard Space Shuttle Discovery in May. Also aboard is Dexter, the Canadian Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator, which we attach to the Canadian robot arm already on and in use at the space station. There are five EVAs, or spacewalks, planned for this mission, which is scheduled to last 16 days. This will be the longest planned mission to the International Space Station to date. Landing is currently planned for 8.35 p.m. on March 26th. There are seven astronauts who will shortly be aboard Endeavour en route to the International Space Station. The astronauts are STS-123 Commander Dom Gorey, STS-123 pilot Greg Johnson, Mission Specialist Number 1 Bob Bankin, Mission Specialist Number 2 Mike Foreman, Mission Specialist Number 3 Takao Doi from NASDA, Mission Specialist Number 4 Rick Linehan, and Mission Specialist Number 5 Garrett Reisman. Launch countdown began here in firing room 4 of the Launch Control Center at 3 a.m. on Saturday morning, March 8th, at the T-minus 43-hour mark, plus the time for the built-in holds. From the start of the countdown until liftoff, the total amount of time, including holds, is 70 hours, 23 minutes. As we said, the countdown clock is now in a planned 2-hour, 30-minute built-in hold, and will resume counting at 10.33 p.m. The remaining holes are at T minus 20 minutes, which is 10 minutes in duration, and at T minus 9 minutes for approximately 40 minutes. Launch day here in firing room 4 began at 6 a.m. this morning. The retraction of the gantry light rotating service structure from around Endeavour followed starting at 8.23 a.m. and was completed at 8.55 a.m. Then personnel began to be cleared from the launch pad and the orbiter's cryogenic fuel cells were activated. Preparations also began to ready the space shuttle's external tank for the loading of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The mission management team met at 4.30 this afternoon to review the countdown status, the weather forecast, and to give a go for fueling. The countdown clock came out of a planned two-hour built-in hold at T minus six hours at 5.03 p.m., the loading of the 143,000 gallons of liquid oxygen and 383,000 gallons of liquid hydrogen began a minute later. Fueling concluded at 8.05, and the seven-member final inspection team was then dispatched to the launch pad. They are scheduled to be there approximately two and one-half hours. Activities underway during the past hour have been the inertial measurement unit pre-flight calibration, 
the alignment of the Mylar tracking station antennas with the launch pad, activating the orbiter's navigation aids, which has just been completed a few moments ago, and the initial signal checks with the Air Force Range Safety Eastern Range. The final inspection team has been measuring the temperatures on the surface of the vehicle, looking for any ice buildup, and performing a final check for any foreign object degree that could strike the orbiter upon ignition. The seven-member team will have walked up and down the entire 380-foot tower of the fixed service structure at the conclusion of their inspections. Here we have some of the final inspection team members on the fixed service structure walking down the entire FSS, fixed service structure, looking for any ice on the external tank or other things that could uh, fall off during launch and strike the shuttle. This uh, inspection uh, usually takes the entire two and a half hours of the built-in hold that we're in right now. We've got uh, just over another 45 minutes remaining in this planned built-in hold. At T minus three hours and holding, this is shuttle launch control. So uh, they they can't forget. Um, and we're let's go ahead and watch the crew come out here now. And they're on uh, what what floor are the astronaut quarters on there? The astro third third floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're on the third floor, uh, coming out of the uh, suit room. And just off to the right there are, uh, is, uh, goes down to the dining room and some of the other facilities, computer rooms. So they're getting on the elevator here on the third floor, and they're going to go down to the first floor, um, come out of the elevator, take a 90-degree right-hand turn, and then go out the exit of the building, and that's where we'll pick them up in the walkout. And the, uh, the family meeting, while they're... They're where? They've already gone to wherever they're going to watch the launch from at this point, I gather. Yeah, that's right. And um, they uh, I believe they're on the roof of the LCC here, right? Or they're, they're in the LCC building right now relaxing and, of course, watching uh, what's going on here. And they'll go up on the roof for the final countdown. Here they come. So uh, some of the uh, team there that we see getting on the uh, astrovin in there, who's going out with them? Uh, well, the chief of the astronaut office uh, is among those going out, Steve Lindsay, as well as the director of flight operations, uh, Brent Jett, and, the, and then a couple of other support engineers. And uh, Steve Lindsay, I guess, he'll be flying the weather uh, reconnaissance and the shuttle training aircraft. And uh, when, when you're, uh, if you're piloting the shuttle, what are some of the things that um, he's going to be conveying that you might be particularly interested in? Well, fortunately, we've got a great weather night, so there's not a whole lot uh, to look at out there. But, but if we had uh, some uh, things to worry about with the weather, it would be things like where the ceiling is, where the, uh, the cloud layers uh, as uh, on the final approach uh, trajectory uh, to the runway. Uh, we have, uh, uh, of course, minimum requirements for ceilings. He'd also be looking for the visibility when you pick up the runway lights, uh, in this case, for a, for a night uh, return to launch site abort. Um, and then uh, look at the wind profile, too, during that final, uh, uh, final approach. If, if we had uh, thunderstorms in the area, of course, we'd be very concerned about that, and we'd be tracking them very closely. And uh, oftentimes we'll go out in the uh, shuttle training aircraft, and, and if there's one kind of on the boundary but we think far enough away, we'll go take a look at it to try to see if it's either uh, 